Okay, so here we go. The most important thing which you have to do if you want to get this right, and it's so simple once you've got this point, is step one. Have you got a test of difference or a test of relationship? How do you find out? You read that scenario on the exam paper very carefully and you are looking for these clues. If you've got different groups of people doing anything at all, actually doing an experiment, a field experiment, it doesn't really matter. If you've got people into groups, you've got a test of difference between the groups, so you don't need this stuff. If you've got a test of relationship, you've got correlational data. Students find this tricky. Here's the clue. If they are saying that something happens with something else, so if you, let's make one up, if you drink a lot of coffee, your hair goes grey, something like that. If you drink a lot of coffee, you get a high score in all your A-levels. So if something's going up with something or going down with something, that's a relationship. So they may say, you know, researchers wanted to look into a relationship between amount of coffee drunk and colour of hair or exam scores, something like that. If you've got a test of relationship, it's so easy. You are going to have ordinal data. It can't be anything else, okay? And you may have interval data, but here's the trick. You only ever need to worry about the ordinal data. If you've got the relationship, you know, scenario, then you've got a Spearman's row test. Even if there is interval data, Spearman's row cannot lose you marks. Be very clear on this. All correlational, all correlational data is ordinal. So therefore, Spearman's row is good for all tests of relationship and you can't lose marks. So if you're not sure Okay, whether you've got ordinal or interval data here, you know, just need to go for Spearman's row if you've got relationship test. You can't go wrong. You can't lose marks, trust me, because ordinal data is good. It's a bottom line. If you've got interval data where you've got time or height or weight or something like that being measured, you need Pearson's R, but you could still use Spearman's row you could still use it, okay? So if you make a mistake and you say, I'm going to use Pearson's R, but it was only ordinal data, you could lose marks, but you'll never lose marks for saying Spearman's row. So think about that one. Okay, that's the relationship stuff gone. So all the rest of the test will be a test of difference. So once you know you've not got relationship data, you've got people into groups and you've got a difference between groups, what do you do? You look at the data involved. Is it nominal data? Is it ordinal data? Or is it interval data? Now, the differences really matter on this side. Okay, not on that side, but on this side, they really matter. Okay, so what you're going to be looking to, first of all, find is nominal data because nominal data is easy to see if you can just accept that these two will always be scores. So nominal data means how many, how many are doing something okay how many people are doing this how many people have this how many people look like this how many people are there or how many things are there okay so it's how many and that is nominal data here's a good example how many people um let's say hair color how many people in your class have got dark hair Okay, that will be nominal data. How many people have got red hair? How many people have got blonde hair? You put them into groups, to categories, and you've got nominal data. You do not have scores. As soon as you see a score, there's been a test, there's been some sort of list of scores, you can't have nominal data. 
So be very clear. So if you've got the nominal data, it's really easy. Have you got independent groups? Have you got repeated measures? If you've got independent groups, that means different people in each group, you've got a chi-squared test. If you've got repeated measures design, that means the same people are being measured. This is actually rare. Then you've got a sign test. Okay, so once you know it's not nominal data, it can only be two more things. It's it's a score scenario. So you've either got ordinal data or interval data. Mostly, and here's another trick, these two tests are good for both. Ordinal data is a lower level of interval data. So if you said it was independent groups, man, Whitney, ordinal data, test of difference, you would not lose marks. But if you said it was a unrelated t-test, but there, there was no interval data, you could lose marks. So I would always say, go for the ordinal data just in case if you're not sure. Okay, so what is ordinal and what is interval? Ordinal data simply means you've got a list from the first until the last. So it might be from the very highest score until the lowest score. It might be from the first past the post to the last person past the post. Whereas interval data is always a very clear, standardised measurement, okay? This could be like time, it could be height, it could be weight okay so you must know those and then so once you know them the same thing again if you've got independent groups and you've got ordinal data man whitney if you've got interval unrelated t if you've got repeated measures the same people doing all the tests then you've got will will cox and t or you've got a related t test okay so that's it. The, the key thing is scores. If you see scores on that exam paper, forget chi-squared, forget sign test. You've got ordinal data of some sort and it must be these tests here. Okay, I hope that was something useful for you all. I'm going to post this in the box below so you can cut and paste it. Okay, good luck to everybody.